God, your father, man. Quote, we basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. So apparently we have gotten to the point where we are ignoring outright historical levels of natural disasters. If you're not aware and you haven't watched the previous video I've already uploaded regarding East Palestine and Ohio, I did a minimal reporting just simply about the reporter who had been arrested from News Nation. I have yet to get a chance to call for comment. I have a compilation of you for some videos, some with people who are close to the area, some are people who have followed this issue the moment it happened, and some are just basic compilations of recordings, videos, um, evidence proof, everything you need to look at this as much as we have. It's currently a media blackout right now. It's hard to find any information. It looks like we're getting a lot of people on the ground though, physically. Um, so let's continue. Starting this video compilation of these clips is going to be what has mainly gone viral that has caused so many um, further reporting to come about about this. Is a short minute and 29 second video. Train derailed Friday, 20 of them carrying hazardous materials as flames lit up the sky in northeastern Ohio. The evacuation order is in place for anyone within a mile radius of the crash site. These aren't, these aren't storm clouds. This is the fucking shit! The fucking shit they burn off in East Palestine! This is not fucking storm clouds! Look at it! This right here is the two sheriffs who were in plain clothes who arrested the News Nation reporter Evan Lambert, who they claimed was being too loud, which was previously covered in my first video regarding East Palestine. Now, significantly, is the reason why this is hitting so close to home for me personally and a lot of people who I'm close to is I am somebody who lives in the state of Ohio, so this is more than likely going to be affecting me before I understand what's actually affecting me. Officials are claiming that the air and water are safe. The residents say they can still smell chlorine. They've complained about their eyes watering when they go outside. And one woman says the noxious air killed her chickens. Out of nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and went very fast. Look at all these fucking crows. I'm not kidding. This is within 10 miles of East Palestine. You have not evacuated. Please leave the area. That right there is extremely powerful video content. Why is this not mainstream news? Why do you think you've not heard anything? Why do you think I am the first source or second source or even third source of information you've gotten about what may possibly be the Chernobyling of Ohio? And who deserves massive credit is the TikTok user Nick Drum who has compiled a lot of information regarding East Palestine. This has been the almost the major source of where I've compiled a lot of this information from. Um, this is just one of a few videos he has released regarding a lot of what has happened. And in here will be a lot of information regarding things such as water reporting and the lack of transparency regarding the entirety of this issue. This hasn't been getting a lot of coverage and the coverage that it has been getting hasn't been very good. So let's talk about the trail derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. East Palestine's about an hour north of Pittsburgh, almost halfway to Cleveland. Norfolk Southern has a rail line that goes right through town, and this derailment happened right on the edge outside of town on the border of PA and Ohio. Of the cars that crashed, five of them contained vinyl chloride. It's a monomer used to make PVC. Some of the reporting on this has gotten vinyl chloride confused with polyvinyl chloride, the polymer made out of vinyl chloride. Now, the reason that this distinction is really important is vinyl chloride is very hazardous and very flammable. Polyvinyl chloride is a plastic that's used in like everything. The other thing about vinyl chloride is that it boils at 8 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's shipped in its liquid form. Meaning that when these trains crashed and these started leaking, they weren't just leaking liquid, but they were spewing boiling gas. So vinyl chloride is really toxic. OSHA has the permissible limit of how much you can be exposed to it during an 8-hour shift as a 1 ppm part per million. 
average over eight hours. So prior to this, the biggest spill of this chemical was in New Jersey, where one train car and about 23,000 gallons of vinyl chloride were spilled, but it didn't catch on fire. Now, this crash in Ohio... You didn't catch what he just said there. He said the previous recorded incident of this spillage of this exact substance happened in New Jersey. However, it did not catch on fire. So the circumstances are definitely different. They are a degree in a level beyond what would have happened in New Jersey. Has five train cars. These kinds of tanker cars can carry between 25 and 33,000 gallons. Let's call it 250 to 250,000 pounds of vinyl chloride. That's per train car, five train cars. There's maybe a million pounds of this toxic chemical spilling into the ground and also boiling off into the air. But then it caught on fire. I think this is where the reporting is really bad because no one is mentioning what the byproduct of vinyl chloride burning is. Of the many byproducts of burning vinyl chloride, one of them is hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is really unstable and latches onto water, like just water vapor in the atmosphere, and that turns into hydrochloric acid. So right now, government officials, officials from the railroad, both the governor of Pennsylvania and Ohio are calling burning off the million pounds of this stuff a success, but not mentioning that it means that we have hundreds of thousands of pounds of acid in the air, potentially. And I want you to listen to this next part specifically, because I think this is why this is going to tie into the censorship portion of this and why it's seemingly that there is a great lack of information. Good to learn about mistakes. When looking at these kinds of industrial disasters across time, there are a couple things that are pretty universal across all of them. One, the responsible party in this case, Norfolk Southern Railway, always plays down the reality of the situation. Politicians also just repeat the same lines, and then news outlets just repeat the same. So all we are hearing is the responsible party's word. The responsible party's word is all we're hearing right now, which Obviously, they're going to play down the reality of the situation to reduce just how much they're going to be liable for. And when you think of something of this scale being liable for thousands of individual people, let alone thousands of individual people's belongings, possessions, homes, lives, properties, cars, all that together, you are looking at an absolute mess. Probably what would significantly bankrupt the company and the investors behind them as well. Now, the following video was brought to my attention as it was quote tweeted by Jack Posobiec. This is a um, very, very woke looking individual who is exposing and explaining some information because she claims that she is from the area and that she is in contact with people who are currently living in the area. And we're going to go ahead and take a listen to see what she has to say. I see so many people talking about the train derailment at East Palestine, Ohio. I literally grew up right down the road from East Palestine. Um, my old childhood best friend lives in the fucking town. Um, my current best friend literally lives right next to the town. It is so much worse than what the media is telling any of us. I'm getting reports from people that are down there right now that they're literally seeing schools of fish floating down streams, rivers, fucking dead. Yeah, we did see that. If you go back to the first video that was played, kind of the opening video of this segment, you will notice that there are a couple clips, probably like just short one to two to three second clips of entire groups of fish floating dead down the stream. I got a video from my friend, okay? And she's like walking, dude. It's all fucking dead. All fucking dead. And on the top of the water is a really pretty chemical rainbow sheen. The chemicals are in the fucking water and they're lying to the rest of the country. He said there was a rainbow color sheen to the water. That is terrifying. That's probably the same kind of rainbow color sheen you see in a parking lot when oil is leaked from a vehicle. The water's been contaminated. The soil's been contaminated. The fucking air is contaminated. You literally are about to see some of the worst fucking health side effects coming out of people in that town. It's not even funny. And y'all want to know something even more fucked up? The restaurant that I work at in a whole different state had to donate food to them because we had people from the churches calling to tell us that red cross never fucking came fema never fucking came the environmental con con conservationists still have yet to fucking come she is claiming that all of the normal all of the normal 
um, first responders, the disaster response, the regular amount of organizations you would expect to place themselves at the front of the line to assist these people, she's claiming never came. And nobody's fucking helping them. Meaning all of the fucking firefighters that were working get no food, have nothing to help them, nothing. Okay, all the people that were displaced have no food, water, a place to stay, none of that shit. It is so much worse than what they're telling you, and TikTok probably won't even let me post this video, but if this video gets posted, please save it and repost it everywhere you fucking can, because I'm telling y'all, they are covering this shit up. I got your sister, I'm gonna try my best. They are covering this shit up because they don't want to get out how bad it actually was. This was not good. This was the worst fucking thing that's happened probably in the past eight years. That entire town is basically unlivable now because of the fucking chemicals. And they're lying telling civilians that it's safe. They're covering shit up. They're covering shit up. They're covering shit up. But it's not surprising. Why would they cover up something to this degree? I can tell you the first thing that comes to mind. If they were transparent, I guess, and if the claims are as egregious as what she's saying, you would literally have a revolution overnight with these people, with what you would have done to their property, their land, their homes, and you're not going to take responsibility for it. One of the last videos I'll bring your attention to is Malcolm Flex. Now, in this video, he is on the ground. Now, at the time, right here, you'll see this only has 74,000 views, which is considerably low compared to most of the other views that you saw on the previous videos, which were in the millions. So I'd imagine that the traffic choke point for the information has already started. Hopefully trying to try to use Twitter to the best that I can because it's probably going to seemingly be the least restricted social platform to pull information from. And unfortunately, not too many news articles that are explaining in, in detail or being transparent enough for me to feel comfortable using them for the video or even worth reading. Assuming that you don't live under a rock, I'm going to figure that you heard something or at least a little anything about the explosion or controlled explosion that happened out in Palestine, Ohio. The big it's East Palestine, not Palestine. There are both that actually exist in Ohio. One is on the far west side, that is Palestine, and one that is on the northeast side of Ohio, which is East Palestine. The issue here is that there's scant media coverage. Number one on the original derailment, which again you can maybe find a couple of articles where you can find people waving it off, but they're not front page news. It's not given the magnitude that it deserves. But big issue here is that this has the potential to turn into a massive health crisis. So we're talking rivaling the ground zero 9-11 first responders issue. And what he's talking about is the air quality surrounding the entirety of ground zero, which was 9-11, when it was told that some of the air and it, these areas were safe to be re-inhabited after it had taken place, which we had much, much to our detriment learned that that was not true as many people have suffered uh, very, very damaging health issues, specifically related to the breathing in of abestos. Where people were suddenly dying from the effects of all of those particles and dust, but they were told by the experts that it was okay, right? And I think the main thing to take away from this video is that he is going on the ground because it's seeming that there is zero ground presence covering this. It's unfortunate, right? It's unfortunate because I wish I had the time and the resources to be able to physically go and travel day i would have taken it the time out but i just unfortunately don't have the the resources to be able to expend to be able to do that today because this would be a lovely experience to go i mean lovely i say lovely but it would be a great experience to be able to go in in person and try to talk to people physically i think what i will do is i think i will reach out specifically I'm, i actually think i will try to reach out to the girl who posted that tiktok because she did say that she was received a video from her friend who lives inside the town of the schools of dead fish. And I'm curious if that video is different than anything we've seen. This is recorded by WKBN uh, First News. There were three additional chemicals that were discovered on the East Palestine train derailment outside of the vinyl chloride that's been going viral. The US Environmental Protection Agency sent a letter to Norfolk Southern stating that ethylene glycol, monobutyl ether, and ethylexyl acrylate, and isobutylene were also in the rail cars that were detained or derailed. Ethyl exyl acrylate is especially worrisome. He said that it's a carcinogen and contact with it can cause burning and irritation in the skin and eyes. Breathing it in can irritate the nose and throat and cause coughing and shortness of breath. Isobutylene is also known to cause dizziness and drowsiness when inhaled. Quote, we basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. It's Silkegiano. 
a hazardous materials specialist. Nukes a town. So this is the final video I'm going to include in this because I think a lot of this just seems to stem from the same original evidence that was posted that went viral. You can find this video link from Red Voice Media on Twitter at Red Voice News. This was a this is a compilation video regarding all of the a lot of the visuals that they did record from that. What I'm going to bring your attention to here is is the clouds in this clip. There are already formed dark clouds above the skies of East Palestine. Now, what I will tell you is I've had so many issues trying to play this video. But we'll reshare it. You will see just massive derailment, an exuberant amount of smoke. Now, this is what I wanted to bring your attention to. Look at all these dark clouds. This is the fucking shit that they burn off. The fucking shit they burn off in East Palestine. This is you can hear he's enraged. Clearly, the people who are there in the town probably have a greater understanding of what's going on. I'm really hoping that someone on the ground there can get some answers out of these people or get some kind of comments that will enlighten us on what's really going on. These clouds are not storm clouds. That is terrifying. Look at it! This is over Darlington. This is their fucking success. That ain't no fucking storm cloud. That's the fucking shit from East Palestine! They're fucking controlled first! It's just pure darkness. Pure darkness. Unsure if this was the initial explosion, but this is one of the the biggest explosion that was captured on video. That is incredible. What imagine this is the same plume of smoke that was captured above the clouds. And credits are in the video as well. Photography Matters LLC. Um, there's hundreds of them up here in this area across here. Hundreds. Another fish. Another fish. They're just everywhere. Um, fish. 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 I mean, these are minnows. I mean, they are in our streams. Fish, 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 fish. This is only along one side um, that I can safely walk the water without a... Uh... Now I came out on the other side of this bridge. I just walked you through underneath it. Um, those are your barriers, sand barrier they have. Um, here's more, just hanging out. There's one out in the water, but um, you can see there's just fish dead, hanging out everywhere. Jesus is just in one small area here near this bridge, showing all of these dead fish. I can't read what this says. E.S. This must be some of the protection agency. Be presence along this road here. You guys scooping out all the dead ones? Why, why this is not mainstream news? So what I have here for you right in this picture is a map. The yellow is signifying all of the counties in this area that have a potential to be affected by what very well could be considered the greatest ec ecological disaster in U.S. history. Now, attached to this tweet, I do not know who this is. It is Abby and Kay, the artificer. He says the toxic waste from the derailment near East Palestine has already leaked into the Ohio River, which provides water to 5 million people. So just right there, that water affecting could be as large as 5 million people being affected with their water supply. Is this Chernobyl 2.0? Was this, was this planned? Was this an accident? If it was an accident, I see no reason why this wouldn't be mainstream news and they wouldn't be absolutely lighting this company for their mishandling and the danger to the climate and all of the ecological issues that would come with it, seeing how most people in the media have no issue calling out any other company or any other kind of brand or individual for doing something that seemingly goes against um, being green for the environment. Now, the lack of, like the pure radio silence, the media blackout on this, why? It's baffling, absolutely baffling. If you live in this area, you need to be concerned, you need to be prepared, you need to be ready. You need to be making sure you're buying sources of bottled water in case things do get determined that the water is completely unhealthy for those who will be affected who live in the area. And I'm going to try to keep us updated on these events as much as I can. This is just a short video compilation of what's came out and what's caught traction and ground today. But um, why are they Chernobyl in Ohio?